Well, hello, YouTubers. Welcome back once again to Blinky's Guitar Dungeon, where if your guitar doesn't scream, <laughs> we'll fix that. So, what did I do and what did I not do? Well, what I didn't do was keep my promise about making the video of my putting on that Babbix Full Contact Bridge. When I finally decided I couldn't stand it anymore and I had to have that thing on there, I, um, I wasn't feeling very well, and I certainly wasn't feeling like making a video, so I just put it on. Um, so here's my report. I like it. I got the action lower. actually had to get on the truss rod uh, a little bit and, you know, reconfigure things to, to go along with my newfound ability to control the elevation of the strings and the intonation of the strings, and uh, it plays. It just, it plays nicer now. It it changed the sound a little, but mostly it just enabled me to really tune that action in. I, I enjoy playing the guitar more now, and I already liked it. I was down digging through the guitar center, you know. I go in, I go to their used gear corner, and I look for some of the most beat up, raggedy shit I can find, if it looks like it's worth uh, fixing up. And this time. I ran across a scratched up, grunged up, beat up Sanic with only four strings on it and they were grungy. The bridge was so covered with schmutz that you couldn't tell it was a Wilkinson. <laughs> I put it on the buffer and I cleaned it up. and. Did some work to it and got it to looking like this right here. Samick, Greg Bennett, UM4. Now, they made some of the other models of this with a tunematic instead of having a tremolo, and these, these UM4s, they got this um, Wilkinson uh, tremolo, which is a pretty good tremolo. Now, I've got this thing hard tailed because I don't like trims. Uh, and this is a really slinky tremolo, so when you're bending strings, you bend a string on this thing and all your other strings go out of tune. Some people are cool with that. I'm not one of them, so I hardtailed it. Well, now, having done that, I'll say this. I think a hardtailed Wilkinson makes a much better bridge than any tunematic I've ever played. So I am cool with this the way it is. I feel no need to change it further. A minute, But I took that set of Duncan SH6s that I had in that, in that Epiphone, and I, I stuck them off in here. And here's my plan. Now, this is volume tone three-way and it's one of those crappy three-ways with the black box on it I have a, uh, a less uh, a less ball style three-way that's going to go in it and the top since these are splittable this volume pod is getting changed out for a uh, for a uh, push-pull pot so that I can um, coil split my uh, humbuckers um, they, a lot of people complain about them on a Stratocaster, and I think um, what I notice is in the few different applications I've used SH6s in, um, they really don't like to have a single coil between them. They work better in just a mayhem pair, um, a lot better. Um, it's bound, body bound, neck. Uh, the, the neck is little bit meaty but nice and flat not a not a very pronounced radius it plays really well I've got the action here where it joins the body down to about 5 64th I could get it a little lower than that I just don't want it lower than that this is actually where it feels good to me uh, the nut I'm thinking the nut is some kind of tusk or just to feel it when you when you scratch your thumbnail across it it doesn't feel plastic it's got grovers on it um, the uh, alignment of the tuners, you know, in line with the strings is, is about like what you'd see. In fact, the headstock is just about exactly a PRS headstock with a little Samic curve sliced out of one side of it. I've noticed on this one that the pickup rings are tapered, but they're, when you look at the taper, it actually holds the it actually holds the pickup at an angle to the strings. And I have some other pickup rings that color that are 
flat and I'm thinking about changing those out because that will put in both instances having a flat pickup ring will actually line those um, I'm not sure why they did that but, I, but this will line those uh, pickups up better more evenly on the string and so I see myself uh, um, doing that if not very soon then certainly by the next string change um, i am uh, been a little low energy lately you guys may have wondered why I haven't been putting any videos out I kinda um, I've been I've been ill not once but twice since the last time you saw me and uh, and I just really didn't want to get out here and do anything until I could come out here with my wits about me and do it right and so come here to whine about that but now um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever messed with a Samic UM any of the UM series which is the Ultramax you know they made the Ultramax I know they had the Ultramax 3 and 4 so I'll assume they had a 1 and 2 um, the 4's as far as I know the 4's were the ones that had the um, Wilkinson's on them and I'm happy that it has a binding and I'm happy that it has a bound neck I love the way a bound neck feels people tell me that it's psychological and that you really can't feel any difference but I when I see the binding there I, I think I can so there I go I want I'd like I prefer a bound neck it's one of the reasons I like that jazz bass so much it's one of the reasons I like my Nighthawk so much in fact this my Nighthawk and my jazz bass are the only three bound necks that I currently own right now um, and two of them happen to be the only set neck guitars that I own. <laughs> and I suppose I should uh, quit running my mouth and get this thing flipped over. My big old screwdriver. Okay, before we get too far into this, let's get a place to put the parts. All right, now these are, okay, these are the leads from the new pickups, and these are what I cut off of that three-way, which I'm taking out of there anyway, so let's do that first. Hmm, so unprepared. All right, let's go ahead and pop that out there. Anyway, we've got this crappy little three-way out of there. It's, you know, I'm I'm not impressed with these in the least. I don't know. There's a little metal film capacitor in it that I'm going to leave the way it is. Eventually. Okay, let's talk like let's talk circuitry for a minute. Some people call it a treble bleed circuit. Some people call it a um, resistor capacitor uh, network. But. Um, do you ever notice as you roll off your volume, you drop a lot of treble just instantly? I mean, almost like the first 25% of the volume pot. I mean, even on an audio taper, you can hear it happen. But on a, on a non-audio taper, just, just like the treble just falls off quickly. Um, basically, you take a um, 150K quarter watt, 150K ohm quarter watt, you know, resistor and um, and you just stretch it par parallel across a you know one thousandth uh, microfarad um, capacitor you know just and then and, and just you know chain it across so that it's in, in uh, parallel and then just take the two ends and put one on the input side of your volume control and put one on the output side of your volume control and just repeat that process for however many volume controls you have and you know tuck it up so that it doesn't short out on anything else and you should be good to go um, I think the I think the values that I've quoted are for humbuckers or I, I'm sorry are for 500k potentiometers Although I uh, I've never heard any other values quoted, and I think truthfully that circuit that you could just solder it on to, well you could I think you could solder that onto a 500k pot or a 250k pot, 
um, I wouldn't do it with a 25k and I don't think I would do it with a one meg pot um, well no I don't think I would do it. I would try it with a one meg pot but I wouldn't do it with a 25k pot I may have to make a run back down to the guitar store and get a different potentiometer I may have screwed up because it's a carved I mean it's a carved top oh son no, <laughs> no, no, that's not going to work. Okay. Oh, shit, wait a minute. What am I doing? Did anyone else, did anyone, did anyone else see the stupid thing that I just did? That's a volume pot. And the hole's where the three-way goes. Do you know what I need? I need a sip of Gatorade. You know what else I need? I need a big slug of cold ice water from my giant mug from the come and go. Yeah, I know, but we have one. Say what you want. I'm drinking it. Mmm. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Oh, now I have the strength to rip that shit open. Just being where that hole is right in the carve. It really doesn't want to adjust or it doesn't want to tighten down that well. Yeah, that's pretty tight. You know what? I'm gonna end up I'm going to end up putting a small felt washer. I'll use like a brown or something that will match this well. I'm going to have to put a small felt washer under there to kind of eat up some of the unevenness under this and it will tighten down better. But that, that actually, that's a much better feeling switch. Where was another piece of junk? Yeah, nah, I'm glad that's gone. I'm going to have to strip these way back and get my color coding chart from Seymour Duncan. I think it's the red and white wires. I've got them soldered together now. I think those are the ones that I pile through the... What I'm really doing is I'm, I'm setting up a switchable ground on these... <sighs> and what's going to happen there is I'm, I'm going to... Uh, when I switch the ground, when I pull the switch up, it'll be switching the ground on, which will effectively shorten the circuit and only use half of the humbucker, making it sound like a single coil. In this case, a pretty stout single coil because um, it's an SH6, and half of an SH6 is still going to be pretty uh, pretty high output. It'll be a pretty high output single coil. Samick, Greg Bennett. UM4. Um, any of you guys ever played one of these? Um, I'm going to tell you. Oh, I didn't tell you how much I paid. Listen, seriously. Um, $119 out the door. Anyway, this is the new project, and it's not, it's not as big, it's not as big a project as, as the other ones that I'm sort of halted on. The I'm in. I will, I'm not going to move the camera and show you, but I'm in the process of uh, fixing up and customizing a 1985 Honda Rebel 250 for my wife because she needs a cool bike, and and uh, I'm making some custom-made uh, turn signal mounts for it, and making these, which are what I'm going to use. So I'm gutting these. And then I'm removing the, the guts from the other ones, and I'm rebuilding these with the you know other guts, and then I will get on to uh, I'll get on to uh, fixing the bike up. Here, you know what? Hell, I'll show it to you. This is the project scooter where you know I'm I'm a, I'm doing a little custom headlight and and there's the thing on it, and um, put those big Cobra crash bars on it because you know I don't want Mama to be getting hurt. And, 
I've got, I've got the seats and shit up here that I'm going to be doing a little recovering to, and that uh, this is going to get repainted. But anyway, it, well, I, thought, I can guess I can back off, try to get the whole bike in there. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty lanky looking little machine. And once I get the, I mean, I get, the, I'm going to get the handlebars a little different, different risers. Um, you know, it, I'm going to, I'll probably do a little, you know, paint it like a, a jade green with some ghost flames, and it'll, it's gonna, actually going to be a pretty cool little, uh, a bike. Uh, and of course, you know, I mean, there we go, Gary's spare gonad. <laughs> Some people think I'm just not right in the head, you know what I mean? But anyway, um, oh, and another thing, just one more thing, while I'm, while, I'm, while I'm here and just running my mouth. You know, I have been working on an album and trying to come up with, you know, songs that fit a concept, and the album is a dead format, but I don't give a shit. That's how I'm going to do it. Take it or leave it, you know. it's not. It's not like I'm not going to be giving it away when I'm through, because I will. Um, but I have to tell you, I am disturbed by the things that I see happening in the world right now. I don't go around looking for enemies. I don't go around trying to, you know, st to strike up controversy between people. To my friends in the UK, and this is from my heart, I am excited for you that you have this referendum coming up, that you have your chance to get out of the fucking EU, and um, and and you know though those in your society who were who were smart enough not to not to sign on to the euro, keep the pound sterling, which 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 was which is what saved you, which up to this point is what has saved you, and now. You've got a chance to bail yourself out of that whole shit and mess. Look at us. See, you want to be, some of you want to be a state in the United States of Europe. And, and, uh, and you should take a look at what we have over here, okay? A strong centralized federal government that pretty much doesn't give a shit what is happening in the individual states. Power-hungry leaders who pretty much treat the land as if they owned it. I mean, you know... Uh, I heard, I heard Nigel Farage talking with um, oh, the guy from Wales, and 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 I, I and, and I, I'm sorry that I don't remember the gentleman's name because he was actually very articulate. He wasn't a fool, but he kept saying that the uh, that if they got out of the euro, that the United States would not deal with them as an equal trading partner. Why? Because the Obama administration told them that. I mean, it's, listen, if, if everyone in the world doesn't already know that Obama is a lapdog for the EU and the UN, please, listen, if you guys bail out of that stupid failing union and take control of your economics and take control of your borders and take control of your society again, there's not going to be an American who isn't ready to stand beside you because uh, not a real American because we know where we came from. Um, so don't be like those gelded, German males who, I mean, I hate it. You know, I grew up, listen, I'm an army brat. I was born and raised in Germany. I was, born, I was born in Germany, and I was raised in the magical land of what was once known as West Germany. And I still know people over there, and I'm, let me tell you something that is true. There are quite a few former West German citizens who really wished that Angela was still on the other side of that wall. And you know what? I agree with them. You know, you write what you're thinking. Uh, how do you think something and then write something else? I'm So, you know, I uh I was it wasn't my original direction, but then all this happened and and it got into my head. Um But when I'm through, it'll be free. And it'll be as real as I can make it. In any case, um, nice talking with you again. I, I hope I wasn't too boring. I, um, I will, when I get a little more 
caught up on things that I'm doing, I'll get back to those other builds. I'm not going to abandon them. They, they will come to fruition probably this summer. But I just wanted to show up and, and yak a little bit and say hi and, you know, contribute my little piece. And also kind of show off the fact that I've gained some weight and I'm actually in better physical condition and I am healthier right now than at any time since my little nightmare thing started and uh, I just wanted to share that with everyone and say thank you for being a friend be well <laughs>